What's going on everyone, Kellen Rack here, and today we're gonna cover sequence settings and export settings in the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro. People are always asking me questions like, why are my videos gl glitching? Why are there black bars at the top and bottom of my videos? Why are my exports so laggy? Well today, we're gonna fix all of those issues. Once you're in Adobe Premiere Pro, you're gonna to wanna to start by opening the sequence setting panel. That's Command N on a Mac, and that's Control N on a Windows. Now you can see here, we've got a huge number of different presets. It can be very confusing. I've also got my own presets, which I'll get into in a little bit, but you won't have that when you first jump into Premiere Pro. So you'll have this big list, and to start, we're just gonna go ahead and click on the first one we see, RE 1080p 23.976. No need to really worry about this at this time. It's just giving us a base of some settings that we'll go on to adjust. I also like to name my sequence. I typically will just go cut one for the first edit that I'm working on. But we're gonna move over to the settings panel here and that's where we're gonna do a bulk of the work here to create our sequence. So click on that. And you can see here that we have a number of different settings that's actually gonna build the sequence that we want. So for editing mode, we're gonna jump to custom. This is gonna let us have a clear path forward. We'll be able to make adjustments as we see fit for the sequence we want. Time base, we'll go with 23.976. This is gonna give us that Hollywood cinematic feel. A lot of Hollywood films are shot in 24 frames per second. And DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras use this 23.976 frames per second setting. So that's perfect for what we're looking for here. Next, we'll jump down to frame size. If you're working with standard HD footage, you'll wanna keep this at 1920 by 1080. That is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. It's the classic horizontal video that you would see on your TV or on YouTube. It's generally what you're gonna to wanna to go with here. If you were working on something like an Instagram story or a TikTok and wanted vertical video, well, then you just go and you would flop these to make that 1080 by 1920, and you'll see that our aspect ratio, ratio changes to nine by 16. So that's for vertical video, but most of the time, we'll want this at 1920 by 1080. Pixel aspect ratio is almost always gonna be square pixels, so no need to worry about that. Same for field order, no field, progressive scan. You can leave your display format at 23.976 timecode, and your working color space at rec 709. For audio, you're gonna almost always want 48,000 hertz and audio samples, so these can stay the same. And then down in video previews, we have a couple options here. Now, if you know what type of video file you're bringing into Adobe Premiere, then you can go in and set that to be your preview file format. So if you're taking your cards and you're transcoding everything to Apple ProRes 422LT or HQ or something like that, make that change here. If you don't know what you're using for your video file type, for your codecs, if you're bringing files from all different sources, from a camera, from an iPhone, from everywhere, then just change this to iframe only MPEG, leave your resolution at 1920 by 1080, and you will be good to go here. This is just a way to help your computer know what file type is coming into the program and run just a little bit smoother on your edits. Finally, I check maximum bit depth, I check maximum render quality, and I leave this box checked. I can name my sequence again, and here is where we can go ahead and save the preset. Now, I already did this, but I named this one 1920 by 1080 Kellen, and that's just so I know, I'm gonna overwrite the old one, just so I know that I have the standard HD preset ready to go. And now when I come back into Premiere, I go down to custom and you can see that this is right here and I can just click okay and my sequence is ready to rock. So if you're editing with 4K files and you wanna create a 4K video, you just wanna change your resolution here and typically you'd just be doubling it for 4K. So rather than writing in the numbers, I can just multiply by two, multiply by two, and now we've got a frame that's 3840 by 2160. It's ready to go for a 4K video. No need to worry about changing your video previews. Actually leaving these a little bit smaller is gonna help your computer run a little bit smoother with your edit. So you're ready to go here with a 4K video, and I'll just change my sequence to 4K. Now let's take a look at export settings. This is what you're gonna do when you have your finished video and you're ready to kick it out of Premiere for all the viewers. 
So when you're ready to export, you're gonna wanna open up the export settings panel. That's Command M on a Mac, and that's Control M on Windows. So here I'm gonna take you through these settings so we can see exactly how to export our video without any issues. Now, just like when we created our sequence, you're given a very confusing panel with a ton of options, but I'm gonna make this really simple for you. On the left side in the latest version of Premiere, you have a number of different sources you can output to. YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, Facebook, all of these. We don't wanna worry about that here. We're just gonna export out an actual media file that you could then take and upload wherever you choose. So we're selected here, and the first options we're given are to give it a file name. So I'm gonna call this test export, and then we'll pick a location. I'll call this test export v2, because I've already got one. Pick our location, and then our preset, if we already had a preset built, we'd be more than welcome to choose that here, but we're gonna go with just match source adaptive high bitrate for now. And finally, your format is gonna be H.264. Now, I've found that for the highest quality and the lowest file size, the, the perfect combination of those two, you'll wanna go with H.264. This is the best for uploading videos to YouTube. It's the best for exporting videos out for Instagram. Anything on the internet, H.264 H. is your best bet. If you needed something a lot higher resolution for television or something else, then you might wanna go with some of these other choices, but Again, most of the time, H.264 is gonna be the perfect option for you. So once that's set, we can toggle down into this video panel here, and we have a number of additional choices. So if we click Match Source, that's just gonna pull the settings we used for our sequence settings and slap them right here onto our export settings. Now, if we built our sequence right, like we did at the beginning of this video, we shouldn't have any problems here. But if you built your sequence wrong or something's not right with the files on the timeline for your sequence. This is where you can run into a lot of those issues where you have black bars on your videos, where you have glitches, where things don't look quite right. So Match Source will give you a base to connect you to your sequence settings, but then we can go and we can make adjustments as we want. We could change our frame size to HD if we want, we can leave it, or sorry, to 4K if we want, or we can leave it at HD. We could change our frame rate, but again, these are good because we set our sequence up properly. So I'll click More, I'll check Render at Maximum Depth, I'll check Use Maximum Render Quality, the time interpolation is a choice that we have here. Typically, you'll wanna leave it at frame sampling, but if you have a lot of different effects in your video, optical flow will sometimes help those look just a little bit smoother, but that's only for an effect heavy sequence. So frame sampling is good there. Hardware encoding is good here. And the final thing we'll wanna change is our bitrate settings. So bitrate, if you're very confused about this, I've got a video on the channel that walks you through everything you need to know about bitrate. You can check that, I'll put a, uh, a little notification up at the top here if you want to learn more about bitrate. But effectively, it's how high the, uh, the bits are per second in our video, how, how much quality, how much data there is per second in our video. So we're gonna always wanna leave this at VBR one pass, that's a variable bitrate one pass, and our target bitrate is what we're gonna wanna adjust. If we're exporting out a video for Instagram, Instagram story, real, small little video for Instagram, I typically put this at 15 megabits per second. If we want something for YouTube, a little bit higher quality, I'm gonna make this 30. So those are the values that I use as a basis for my video bit rates. Everything else down below should be good to go, so you're ready to hit export. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more information like this, and we'll check you back in the next one.